chaos and bloodshed across southern Israel on Saturday, after the Palestinian militant group Hamas launched its largest attack on Israel in years. Hamas firing thousands of rockets into southern Israel, Israel's missile defense system, the Iron Dome, trying to intercept as many of those rockets as possible. Hamas firing unrelenting barrages at different angles and at different times, trying to overwhelm those defensive systems. These attacks were combined with ground forces invading Israeli settlements. Israel confirming that Hamas militants have taken an untold number of soldiers and civilians hostage. Hamas claims to have enough captives to force Israel to release all of the Palestinian prisoners in its jails. The leader of Hamas says they are prepared to expand the fight to Jerusalem and the West Bank. Israel says the attacks are a declaration of war, quickly firing back with airstrikes of its own into Palestinian territory and calling up hundreds of thousands of reserve troops. Our enemy will pay a price, the type of which it has never known. We are in a war and we will win it. President Biden speaking from the White House Saturday, condemning the violence. Israel has the right to defend itself and its people. Full stop. This is not a moment for any party hostile to Israel to exploit these attacks to seek advantage. The world is watching. Israel is raising its posture on a number of fronts with this fight still in the early stages. Near the Israel-Gaza border, Trey Yankst, Fox News. Locally, Jewish leaders are checking in on family, friends, and colleagues in Israel, but that's not all. They want non-Jews to fully understand how horrific this attack is and what needs to be done. This is, uh, in fact, Israel's 9-11. American Jewish Committee Directors Richard Hershout, just one of many voices, condemning the terrorist attack by Hamas. We were gratified today by President Biden's strong unequivocal support of Israel and condemnation of the Hamas terrorists. That's the kind of clear thinking that we need, that other world leaders need to amplify. The images out of Israel illustrative enough, but Hershout also got firsthand accounts from relatives and friends in Israel. This is um, uh, something that the world should plainly understand as nothing more than pure evil hate and terrorism. The events in Israel make him worry about what can happen here. He's talked with multiple law enforcement agencies like the LAPD. We've added patrols around our our synagogues, we're added our patrols around our Jewish communities and the and various sites that that they uh, that they our members are represent. We also are reaching out and talking with our Muslim uh, leaders with the, the the mosques to ensure their safety as well. There are already efforts to raise relief funds and get them wherever needed as soon as possible. Right now what's most most needed are not blankets or even medical supplies or freights, freights and flats full of things. The funds are what's most important because it allows uh, individuals on the ground who are victims to get what they need. Rabbi Noah Farkas runs a 100-year-old charity that can get money to the right people even if the situation in Israel is so unstable. Everything is so fluid and dynamic, as you said. So we're just going to roll with it. Um, what's most That's why funding is so important, because the need might look like one thing in one hour and then another another hour, and being able to have the funds funds allows us to move them very, very quickly. And several airlines have canceled flights to and from Israel. United had a flight on its way from San Francisco to Tel Aviv when it was turned around over Greenland. Both American and Delta have also canceled flights. Israel's national airline, El Al, says passengers can either suspend or cancel flights without charge.